This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everyone, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're looking at some new ways that Adobe Camera Raw is now integrated into Photoshop CC, and that's Photoshop Creative Cloud. If you're a member of the Creative Cloud subscription service, the new version of Photoshop is available for you to download. But if not, well, I'm sad to say that this does not work for Adobe Photoshop CS6. We're going to start with this image here in Photoshop. And perhaps we've already been working with this a while and we have a number of layers created. Or perhaps we were handed this image already in process. Either way, we might want to take advantage of Camera Raw's develop capabilities and now in Photoshop CC, we have that capability to run Camera Raw as a filter. In fact, Camera Raw can serve as a smart filter. Let's take this top layer, and in the menu here, we'll convert this to a smart object. Now, we could accomplish the same thing with the filter menu. We could choose the filter menu and choose Convert for Smart Filters. Now this step is entirely optional, but if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm a fan of non-destructive editing and smart filters embody that principle. Now with the layer converted to a smart filter, we'll choose from the filter menu, Camera Raw Filter. And guess what? We have the full Camera Raw interface right here as a filter. So if we wanted, for example, to use the upright feature which is new in Camera Raw for Photoshop CC and in Lightroom 5 as well, we could select the Lens Corrections tab and here under the Manual tab, we could select the full upright setting to align both the vertical and horizontal lines in our image. When we click on OK here in the Camera Raw dialog box, we can see that the Camera Raw filter has now been applied as a smart filter. In fact, we can double click this smart filter at any time and open up Adobe Camera Raw once again to adjust our image further. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of this. Now here's another Camera Raw integration feature. Here I'm going to start in Lightroom 5, but this could just as easily be Adobe Bridge. I've selected three bracketed images and I'm going to choose Photo, Edit In, and then I'm going to choose Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Photoshop begins merging the images together and it loads the three into a stack. When the Merge to HDR Pro dialog box comes up, we're going to make a change here. We're going to change the mode to 32-bit. And right away, we see a new option here. Complete Toning in Adobe Camera Raw. When we select this, we'll choose Tone in ACR. And we get the same Camera Raw dialog box we're used to. And we're tone mapping an HDR image with it. So we can come in here and we can adjust the contrast. We can take the highlights down, bring out the shadows. And we can adjust the white balance, even adding the Option key to set our white points and our black points. And once we've adjusted it to our satisfaction, we can click on OK. And this image will be brought into Photoshop as a 32-bit image tone mapped with Adobe Camera Raw. Now this is a 32-bit image. So if we wanted to finish this off, we might want to change this to a 16 or an 8-bit image. Now when we choose Image, then Mode, then 16 bits per channel, we'll get a warning. We'll choose to merge this layer to integrate the smart object and now we're back to our HDR toning panel. Now since we've already tone mapped this in Adobe Camera Raw, we can skip this step and we do that by changing the method from local adaptation to exposure and gamma. And we could adjust the exposure if we want, but best to probably just leave it alone as it was and then we can click on OK and convert our image down to 16 bits. So now we've got, as you can see, a 16-bit image 
that was tone mapped using Adobe Camera Raw from a 32-bit HDR composite image. So as you can see, the Adobe Camera Raw tools are becoming more and more integrated into our workflow in Photoshop. Having a common set of tools to work with can make us more productive and help expand our capabilities. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of information there related to photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can always find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.